Some cases you'll see kids that were mouth breathers or were eating a lot of soft foods and then they recovered their behavior, so to speak, and became nose breathers. Of course, we have to mouth breathe when we're exercising really hard mm. or when we're eating or speaking, we're going to mouth breathe. But at rest, we should nasal breathe is the argument. And that greatly improves craniofacial aesthetics. And the good news is this stuff is modifiable across the lifespan. What were you just teaching me about mouth breathing and how it changes the shape of the face? Now, so I arrived carrying a copy of the book Jaws, A Hidden Epidemic. This book was written by my colleagues at Stanford, Sandra Kahn and Paul Ehrlich. And it has an introduction by Jared Diamond, who won a Pulitzer for Guns, Germs, and Steel, and a foreword by the great Robert Sapolsky, also a colleague of mine at Stanford. So four heavy hitters on this book, just to credential it first. This book centers around a couple of core concepts, but the first being that people and in particular children who overuse mouth breathing as opposed to nasal breathing have changes in the structure of the face that well, to be quite direct makes them far more unattractive than if they were to mouth breathe. It also discusses the chewing of foods as essential to mouth and face development. Sandra Khan is an expert in craniofacial function and structure. And the fact that if your parents and you did things right, you should be able to place your, your entire tongue on the roof of your mouth with your mouth closed. Now, I can't do that, okay? So when you were teeth closed, mm -hmm. tongue in the roof of your mouth, I can, but I still feel the back of my teeth a bit. So I, yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, But the, so that's the second point, that chewing foods is essential to tooth and mouth and face development. Um, these days, many children slurp their food. Uh, many adults slurp their foods. Uh, many adults are eating like babies. And of course, babies before they develop their mature teeth, and even when they before they get all of their teeth in, need to obviously breast milk and pudding-like foods. Okay, but so that's the second point. So nasal breathing good, mouth breathing bad for craniofacial development. Chewing hard foods, chewing a lot on both sides of the mouth, great for craniofacial development, oral development, tooth development, and tooth health. Which, by the way, are correlated with a number of other things like cardiovascular health and metabolic health. Very interesting links there. And then the third point is that the book argues that the entire field of orthodontia, things like braces, things like headgear, things like retainers, are the byproduct of poor breathing and let's just say overconsumption of soft foods in place of hard foods uh, behavior. And so there's this guy who's from your side of the pond, uh, Mew. I like him already. The Mew method um, of restoring normal craniofacial development. The book is chock a block full of impressive photos of before and afters impressive because in some cases you'll see kids that were um, mouth breathers or were eating a lot of soft foods and then they recovered their behavior so to speak and became nose breathers of course we have to mouth breathe when we're exercising really hard mm. or when we're eating or speaking we're going to mouth breathe but at rest we should nasal breathe is the argument and that greatly improves craniofacial aesthetics and the good news is this stuff is modifiable across the lifespan and, um, and so the book isn't arguing for anyone to purchase anything. You don't need a jaws or sizer. I'm saying that explicitly because they took clips of me talking about this and, and, and productized it and I had nothing to do with that. So hopefully you'll keep this in the episode. And they even admitted they were breaking the law. And he said, we don't care. We're going to continue to do it. So sales um, of sales, man. Yeah. But now those, those, you know, to, to the credit of, of, um, products for, uh, exercising the jaw, sure, there are muscles of the jaw that can well, what you're uh, can talking change about the aesthetic, but eat using tough, food to yeah, do that. Eat right. tough food is, right. if you don't have a sufficiently tough diet, yeah. I guess you could replace it. But it's explain to me the mechanics of sure. how the difference in whether you breathe through your nose or breathe through your mouth changes the shape of your face and head. Yeah, well, and it goes beyond that. If you breathe through your mouth as opposed to your nose, first of all, you bring in less oxygen, effectively putting yourself into a state of apnea right, which is bad during sleep. And guess what? It's bad during waking states also. It, you're getting less oxygen to your brain, bad. The sinuses, you know, we hear our, my sinuses are clogged or my sinuses, the sinuses, wish I had brought a skull with, with me because one of the most impressive things about a skull, human skull being no exception, is that the sinuses are literally these little uh, tubes or channels through which fluid and air can move. And the sinuses, even though they are essentially the, created by the fissures between different bones. So like there's two, two or three different bones that are interdigitated, what? interdigitated and create these tunnels. They're actually fairly plastic 
in the sense that they can be modified in terms of their shape. And, and so people will say, well, I have a deviated septum. Guess what? You should em try and emphasize breathing through both nostrils as a, in order to uh, undeviate your septum. Now, if someone has a broken nose or something that's really structurally abnormal, they may need corrective surgery, but purely through deliberate nasal breathing. So it could be mouth taping at night, but also just deliberately nasal breathing during most of your cardiovascular training, unless you need to really you know, hit the gas, in which case, mouth breathe is going to help dilate the sinuses and lead to better airflow, which makes nasal breathing easier. The other thing is that nasal breathing, we know, um, well, first of all, there's a nasal microbiome. There's also an oral microbiome, but the nasal microbiome is particularly well suited to um, scrub or uh, capture and destroy viruses, bacteria, and even some fungal infections. So in other words, when you're breathing in through your mouth, you're more susceptible to infections. This mm -hmm. is important heading into winter as well. Mm. So there are a number of, I mean, we could talk about this for hours, but uh, the point is nasal breathe when you can, kids especially, but all, adults as well, chewing foods that require, you know, eating foods that require some chewing and really working at it and chewing away. Um, they have some impressive images in this uh, book of kids that were twins that were raised separately, one by a group that eats a lot of, um, let's just say tougher foods that require chewing versus one that's slurping their food. And I mean, one kid is literally incredibly attractive, perfect dentature with no orthodonture or, de or you know, regular dentistry. And the other kid is the teeth is like snaggle. Wow. They have the horse, or like the horsey smile. Even though they've yeah. got the same genetic predisposition. Right, right. It's not a perfect experiment because there are other factors as mm -hmm. well. And, you know, none of this is, for better or worse, none of this is really amenable to kind of in laboratory type stuff. 